What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be breaking down a hip hop cue that was recently used on a TV show in Japan. The cue is entitled Six Figure Commission um, and it's part of an album that I did that is called Buying Houses. So y'all know how we do it. First, we'll take a listen to it and then we'll talk about it on a flip. Hey, make sure you hang around to the end because I'm going to show you a clip of the television show where the cue was actually used. Okay, so there it is. Again, um, it's entitled Six Figure Commission. Um, and a few of the particulars, um, it is in B major. Now, originally, um, I did it in A flat major, but the bass wound up feeling better um, in B, so I just took it up. Um, and then it's at 98 uh, beats per minute. Okay, so before we get into it, um, just a real quick backstory. So, um, as I said, I, you know, I wrote this cue, but I recently um, did a trial, a 14 day trial for a company called Track, T R Q K. Um, and they monitor TV stations like in a bunch of countries that TuneSat um, does it monitor. So, um, they picked up over like over a two minute detection um for this cue um i obviously wasn't familiar with the station um you know or the show but i have a friend that is japanese so what is up yuka uh my buddy yuka and her husband michael Reski. so yuka and michael Reski, they're my buddies yuka is japanese so I reached out um, to Yuka and I asked her if she was familiar with the television station. And she's like, oh, Jeff, it's a local station, so I'm not really familiar. And I asked her about the show. Um, and she said, well, you know, I don't know. I just said, hey, it's some ladies talking. You know, I don't know what the show is. Um, but I have a video clip because Track actually grabs video, not just audio. So I said, hey, I have a, a video clip. I can um, send it to you. So I sent her the clip and then she hit me back and she's like, yo, Jeff, like I recognize all the women in this show. They are very, very popular in Japan. And she did some more detective work uh, for me. Um, and she found out that this particular show um, was on Fuji TV, which is a major um, Japanese television network, and it covers a large portion uh, of Japan. So, you know, that, that was pretty interesting. So, hey, it pays to have great friends. So, again, thanks, Yuka. Uh, appreciate you. So, um, let's kind of get into 
the queue a bit. So I, I guess the, the first thing is is to define like what is hip hop? So I define it as positive, upbeat music with a major or happy feel on top of hip hop, a hip hop groove, you know, hip hop drum groove or whatever. So with that said, I guess let's take a look at um, the drums. Um, as you guys will see, the drums are very, very minimal, um, you know, in terms of what I have. I don't have a lot going on. But let's go here to the full groove. So here's the drum groove. So just a simple groove, right? Nothing to it. And as you see, I mean, I got a kick. I got some a bongo loop, you know, going stereo left and right. Um, a regular snare, you know, with a clap. And then I have an accent um, 808 snare and a loop. I mean, that's it. And, you know, cymbal crash uh, every now and then. That That is all that I have um, going on for the drums. So, um we have that, right? And then everything in this cue is kind of built around this really simple um, piano melody. So let me play that for you. Let me move this here. So we have this simple piano melody, and I'm gonna I'll play it right from the uh, intro. And just to break that down, so this um, melody, is, is, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just five, five, six, four, 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 six, five. If, if we're um, talking numbers, so it's in B, so it's that. That is what everything is kind of, oh, everything is kind of built around um, that very, very simple melody. So if we take a look at the, um, the pianos that I'm using, um, I just layered two pianos. I have this Keyscape piano, and it is the um, LA, make sure you can see that, yeah, the LA uh, Custom C7. And I'm using the rock piano, and I, I really like the rock piano um for the bite it ha you know it has a nice bite to it and it's bright it's a real bright piano so if i play just the rock piano all right and then i have that layered um whoops with a piano from um halion or halion or however you say it but this is a cubase um uh, plug-in that I really really like it's really really cool and I'm using this multi tack piano um, and again I'm using it for for the bite um, it has a really nice um, attack to it and then it had a really cool delay um, that was being used in it so And we put those two together. So that that's it. And like I said, everything um, is built off of that. And I feel like with those um, pianos layered like that, it gives us a nice um, it gives us a nice bite. But I feel like it gives us a nice um, contemporary sounding um, piano. Um, as well. And then one thing that you'll notice is on like the end of the phrase um, when I'm actually into the um, A section, I add in this other sound as an additional layer for like some, some sparkle on top of the pianos and that's this. So it almost sounds like, I don't know, um, some bells or, you know, something like that. Um, but it's an Omnisphere patch, and it's called Broomfinger Felt Pick. And it's actually a Keyscape 
uh, patch, which which makes sense. But so I just add that kind of on the <clears throat> excuse me on the end of the phrase, and if we hear all those together. So there you have it. That is everything that's happening from the standpoint of piano. Um, now the next thing that we have is um, I use, I create this string counter melody off of uh, the piano. So if I play for you when I'm playing in my strings, we have this counter melody going on. And it's just a real simple counter melody um, that we have going against that piano. And then what I'm doing is from a layering standpoint, I'm using uh, some real string samples because I'm using um, the Epic Strings. Let's uh, open that up. And we don't want that. We want this. So I'm using the um, Epic Strings, Epic Short Strings from Spitfire um, Audio, the original um, Epic Strings. And then I'm also using just, you know, you guys are seeing plenty of times, cinematic studio strings, um, the violin ones and the violas. Um, but I have, so let's play the, you know, the string, oops, the strings um, samples that we have. So we have this. <laughs> So they are the real strings, if you will, right? And then I layer them with some synth strings. So I'm using Halion um, and so I'm using this artificial pizza uh, patch from Halion, which sounds like this. Super bitey helps um, really helps the strings cut through. And then I have this other uh, uh, artificial pizza patch as well, but that's just for the low. So if we play those together. Right? They sound kind of like ridiculous by themselves, right? But um, yeah, together kind of mixed in with the other strings, I think they sound great. So if we layer all those together. Right, so um, that's what we have there. So um, that's our strings, that's our keys. So the next thing that we have is our horns. Um, so what I did, um, <clears throat> excuse me, get a little water. So in this regard, I am using the um, Hollywood Pop Brass. Um, and it's uh, from East West. Um, you can get the library, but it's just Hollywood Pot Brass that I'm using there. Uh, and so I'm using, like, they have the, sorry, the short. And then I just layer in the long articulation with it. Right, and then I layer that with a kind of cheesy synth horn patch, um, but I like it, uh, and it's this patch here. Um, and again, it's Omnisphere, and it sounds like so. Right, sounds a little cheesy, a little weird, but it, it thickens up the brass a little bit and then it bites it 
uh, when you're doing those staccatos. So when you put everything together, So yeah, you know, um, together mixed in, um, they sound, they sound, I think, pretty good uh, in terms of kind of helping us get our get the point across um, that we want. And then the only other thing that I have is my bass. And for the bass, I am using the old trusty uh, from Sublab XL, and I am using the Sub Fatty. And if you guys see, I rolled off like all of the highs, um, you know, in this particular patch for this. Um, and what we have there is this. Right, so that's that, and then like if you like have like your bass, any of your pretty pretty much any of those bass sounds, and you want to kind of get that glide effect, all you really want to do is carry over, um, extend like one note over the other. So you see this note here, I just extend it um, to run into that note there. Just this note is a little longer, so we get that drop off. We get that. Um, just that glide effect. So yeah, just extend your notes a little long. It, it's pretty much the same that you do if you're doing your strings and you want them legato, how you cross them over each other. So same same um, effect if you want your bass to, to glide. Um, and then the only other thing in this cue are some tr transitional elements, you know, risers, sweeps, you know, uh, whatever, reverse symbol, a few risers, um, sweeps and then I think I have a, a feel here a little drum feel a reverb clap so you know a little ear candy and, and transitional elements but that's it this thing is super simple right so that's it in terms of our sounds now let's talk about the form because this um, this is a critical piece so I would say like make sure like you really spend time trying to really lock in on your form and getting that right um, and trying to do as much as you can to give the editors like just different varieties of the same thing uh, within your cue as it relates to the form. So we're gonna kind of get inside it um, just a bit to show you what I did. So, um, Obviously, the first thing that we do is we start with an, a four bar intro that's piano and clap, right? And then the bass kind of leads us into the A section. So intro. Boom, that's it. So this intro is 10 seconds. So 10 seconds, plenty of time to set things up. I'm introducing, uh, you know, what my theme is. I got the clap, so we have some rhythm to it so they can feel, you know, what kind of what the vibe of it is. Um, and then, um, you know, we add a cool little, a cool little bass feel to kind of get us in. You know, so just something, you know, just to kind of get us in. And then the other thing you'll notice is I do just a little um, snare, um, little snare hit, ta ta, you know, just to kind of get us um, into there as well. So again, four bars, 10 seconds, just the piano to introduce our theme with a clap uh, behind it, and we're there. Okay, so we get into our A section. And the first thing that we have is we have four bars um, of that theme, but it's scaled back, right? So we first four bars of the A section. Pretty open, pretty scaled back, you know, not really big, but it's the theme. So that's the first four bars of our A section. 
The next four bars of our A section is what we want to do here is we want to layer, right? So same thing, but we want to layer, um, just add a little more to it. So in this particular section, um, I layer my strings up an octave. I add some brass right here, those brass layers that I told you about. And I add the bongos and it. You really do feel a lift. So let's come off of this last four bars and then go into the first four bars of our layer. Okay, now our final four bars of the A theme, I layer again by just adding that piano layer thing that I told you about earlier, the broom finger, um, which gives us kind of that bell sound, but just another um, high piece. So we add that um, four bar layer going into our first edit point. <music> So one thing I do want you to notice, our first edit point, you heard it super clean, and we also leave it hanging. So ba ba ba. So four, six, five, right? Leave it hanging, leave it kind of up in the air a little bit. We don't want the same exact edit points every time we do something. And then the other thing you'll notice is I did a six, four bar there. Um, I felt like uh, two full bars was a little too long. So it's Bobby Bob one, two, and then we're in to our next section. So here the breakdown. One, two. So coming out of our edit point, and like I said, you notice that edit was nice and clean. If they wanted to stop it right there, um, they could. Now, m one thing that I noticed in the show um, is, um, and maybe I'll, you know, show you some of the video or something. I'm just not sure if I can. But one thing I noticed in the show is at that exact, <clears throat> excuse me, at that exact edit point, the ladies like did some thing where they broke like right at that edit point as well. It was almost like, you know, it was time together or whatever. So th those edit points really do matter. Okay, so when we come out of our first edit, um, we go into a breakdown, right? And what you'll notice is I scaled back the piano melody. So I'm not like on bump, bump, ba ba bump, bump, ba ba bump. So we want to let it breathe. So here we kind of let it breathe. Um, so the, here's the first four bars. All you hear. Um, is the scale back piano melody and, and drums and bass. First four bars, right? Next four bars, what do we want to do? Layer. So, but we don't want to get too crazy, so I just add a low string layer. Okay, going into, you hear that transitional element just to kind of help us into the next section. So we're still in this breakdown, but we want to make it interesting. We don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. So now I drop the piano and bass for four bars. <laughs> another four bars and I'm doing something different. So now I let the felt pick pick up um, the melody and then I bring the bass back um, and then um, I bring in the horns and then on the end of this last four bar section, I actually go to the four chord as now my other, at getting into my other edit point. So with this last section. Mm -hmm. 
So you heard that edit point, right? A totally different edit point from my first edit point. So ba 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 ba. But this is ba 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 on the four, and just now we just have a four beat uh, edit point here. So I do a whole four beats here. I don't do the six four bar, but I, I do a whole uh, four. But I have a riser and I have this little tom feel um, within. <clears throat> excuse me, our edit point. And what I wanted to do here, um, I just kind of wanted to give it that like old hip hop kind of drum feel. So that's what you hear there. Right, okay. So now, excuse me, get some more water. So now we're into or getting into our final theme, right? And what I typically like to do on my final theme is a little harmonic um, variation. So if you guys recall, the first theme was. And now getting to this um, particular theme, it's just a little different. Instead of going um, starting on a five, I start on seven and then I go to two, so. So that's the difference. So again. So just to kind of make it a little different, it's the same thing, uh, you know, instead of being on five, you're on seven, which is just a substitution. Um, and then instead of being on, um, bump, bump, buddy, instead of being on six, you're on two, um, which is just another um, substitution. So um, just a way to kind of keep things interesting. Now, one thing you'll notice though, when we get back into our um, final theme with a harmonic var uh, variation, everything is in. So we've had all these breakdowns and you know variations of different ways to present it, and now we're, we're we're on our way home. So here we go. And then the last thing that you'll notice is on that right before the button, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys hear that I give a clear indication that the cue is ending because I do a, uh, I do a. So I do that two, five in the bass. Ba, boom, ba, be, ba, boom. So now, so listen to that, how I give a clear harmonic indication that the cue is ending. So you that baby boom, ba -bee boom, boom, right? And then we come to a nice clean button. So um, yeah, guys, this was just a real quick look at um, how really your music can be used across the world um, if you're structuring it for television. I mean, television is television, whether it's in Japan, whether it's in the US, Germany, whatever, television is television. They have certain rules um, that will apply, certain things that will be um, looked for in a queue. And I think, um, you know, with this, you give yourself just a better chance um, if you kind of utilize this playbook, this form. I mean, this is pretty much form and structure that you will see period you know your intro uh your theme then you layer then you break down then you have variations um you know then you you come out and maybe you do something a little different harmonically just to give it some interest and a nice clean button on the end and <clears throat> excuse me and then of course one of the other very critical things is to have great edit points and to have different edit point so every edit point doesn't sound um, exactly the same so um, I hope that this 
a quick tutorial was helpful for you. I hope it was inspirational for you. And I'm gonna see if I can um, grab just a little clip of that uh, Japanese television program and just a play a little bit of it for you um, as we go out so you can see how the cue was actually used.黒は、ま、元ってせの。せの。せの。赤。<笑> わかんなかった。なんだ赤。赤。黒。青。プレー。赤。私ずっとクラスで一番の子が好きだったんですよ。ああ、じゃあ赤だわ。もう足も早い。あ、そう。なんか青のことなんかなんかね、名前嫌い